Salve Maria! Once again we're together to meditate and today we're going to address a subject which many think is very hard but we'll come to a conclusion together that once you start then things flow. Let us pray to start the seventh day of our novena with the prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, Fill the hearts of thy faithful and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit and they shall be created and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who hast instructed the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that by the same spirit we may be always truly wise, and ever rejoice in His consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be world without end. Amen. We have just prayed, grant that by the same Spirit we may be always truly wise. But after all, what does it mean? to be truly wise? When we find that even those who try sincerely to, to have faith, to live their faith, get carried away by seductions of the world and justify their actions by claiming that it is difficult to keep the commandments and walk righteously. They blame the internet, the influence of friends, challenges, everyday life, but we have a great secret to be truly wise and to be righteous. We must appreciate the things and the perspective of God. God has a way of thinking that's called wisdom. But how do we do this? By opening the window for the sunlight to enter. That is, by opening our souls that the light of the Holy Spirit can dwell within us. We can ask ourselves the questions, and how can we achieve this, this intimacy with the Holy Spirit? We must pray the rosary as Our Lady asks at Fatima. Of course, confession. Weekly confession would be the ideal, but that's not always possible. Of course, the sacraments, Holy Communion, uh, and attending Mass fervently, that's very important. When a person says out on the road of holiness, when he or she chooses to enter through the narrow gate of sanctity, because we all know that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction, and those who enter through it are many. But it's the Holy Spirit that shapes the soul, showing it what is good, what is evil, what is right, what is wrong, what pleases God and what saddens God. The more a person opens himself to the action of the Holy Spirit, the more refined his perception, our perception becomes, our conscience becomes cleaner, and that's how we attain true wisdom. There is no mystical phenomenon 
will we not hear voices, trumpets, or angels warning us about dangers? Nothing that comes from God is extremely flashy. It is subtle, soft, unobtrusive. God is like a breeze in silence. He's delicate. He speaks through little, little signs. People who prefer to offend God in order not to offend those who disrespect and offend Him just because they are afraid of receiving criticism and being despised, grieve the Holy Spirit, sadden the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, there has been an extraordinary increase in the number of people who are ashamed of God. Some even go to church, attend Mass, and receive Holy Communion, but hide their faith because they are ashamed that their friends know that they do these things. With this attitude, they end up no longer going to church. They even they abandon their religion, and they are short-stepped from destruction. Whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, the Son of Man, will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. That's from Luke. Therefore, even living with so many difficult situations, what do we have to do? Seeing the increase of violence and even witnessing injustice and religious persecution, seeing the word plunged into licentiousness and sin, unable to resist the onslaughts of the Prince of Darkness, we must not be discouraged, never disheartened, please. It is up to us Catholics to watch and pray, and it is in this action of the Holy Spirit over our souls that we will be able to resist, to resist and to continue on God's road, on the God's path. We must never be afraid to be different and to live our faith openly, we must be a home for the Holy Spirit. But if by doing so, we end up having little friendship or few friends, but our best friend is the one who is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Divine Holy Spirit, who on the day of Pentecost rested upon the heart and soul of our Mother Mary Most Holy and the Holy Apostles. Although we are so imperfect, we dare to ask that you consider touching our souls and hearts as well, so that we may know and fulfill the Father's will for our lives. Fill us with the light of your love, so that we may continue walking the path of holiness, free us from the slavery of sin, and deliver us from evil. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Salve Maria, and we'll see you tomorrow.